Good morning. It's me, the one and only. I'm just getting off work and I felt the need to share something that's important to me. Um, this book, I'm gonna read a little bit. So if you ain't down to hear some pretty good stuff, by all means, don't stick around. But I encourage you to. This book is powerful. It's very meaningful to me. And I think you guys would get something remarkable from it. I'm not going to read the preface, um, that preface, but I would like to start from basically the first chapter of this. Okay, this book is called Warrior of the Light. Okay, Paulo Coelho. If I'm not mistaken, this was the first book that I read of his. Second book was The Alchemist, because I didn't realize that The Alchemist was written by Paulo Coelho. I was always told, read The Alchemist, read The Alchemist, read The Alchemist. Anyway, Warrior of the Light. Okay? <clears throat> I'm going to stop talking and I'm going to start reading. A warrior of the light knows that he has much to be grateful for. Angels help him in his struggle. Celestial forces place each thing in its place, thus allowing him to give it his best. His companions say, he's so lucky, and the warrior does sometimes achieve things far beyond his capabilities. That is why, at sunset, he kneels and gives thanks for the protective cloak surrounding him. His gratitude, however, is not limited to the spiritual world. He never forgets his friends, for their blood mingled with his on the battlefield. A warrior does not need to be reminded of the people, I'm sorry, reminded of the help given him by others. He is the first to remember and he makes sure to share with him any rewards he receives. All the world's roads lead to the heart of the warrior. He plunges unhesitatingly into the river of passions, always flowing through his life. The warrior knows that he is free to choose his desires, and he makes these decisions with courage, detachment, and sometimes with just a touch of madness. He embraces his passions and enjoys them intensely. He knows that there is no need to renounce the pleasures of conquest. They are part of life and bring joy to all those who participate in them. But he never loses sight of the things that last or of the strong bonds forged over time. A warrior can distinguish between the transient and the enduring. Very important so far. If you take that and you just study those two pages, you would find enough. But I'm going to keep going. A warrior of the light does not rely on strength alone. He makes use of his opponent's energy too. When he enters the fight, all he has is his enthusiasm. The moves, the strikes that he has learned during his training. As the fight progresses, he discovers that enthusiasm and training are not enough to win. What counts is experience. Then he opens his heart to the universe and asks God to give him the inspiration he needs to turn every blow from his enemy into a lesson in self-defense. His companions say, he's so superstitious. He stopped fighting in order to pray. He even shows respect for his opponent's tricks. A warrior does not respond to these provocations. He knows that without inspiration and experience, no amount of training will help him. It's another one to study and learn. Just that page alone. You could spend a whole day reading that and mulling over that. Let's continue. A warrior of the light never resorts to trickery, but he knows how to distract his opponent. No matter how anxious he is, he uses every strategy at his disposal to gain his objective. 
When he sees that his strength is almost gone, he makes his enemy think he is simply biding his time. When he needs to attack the right flank, he moves his troops to the left. If he intends on beginning the battle at once, he pretends that he is tired and prepares for sleep. This is kind of Shun Tzu's art of war right there, just letting you know. In my opinion, that's where I related to. Shun Tzu's art of war really talks about um, battle tactics and playing the field based off of what you know about yourself, what you know about your enemy, and the dynamics of what's happening. You, you want to be in their mind, seeing from their point of view. Anyways, I don't want to get too caught up in that. Read Shun Tzu's Art of War. You'll be great. Okay? Mm. Let's move on. Warrior of the Light, baby. Woo! His friends say, Look, he's lost all enthusiasm. But he pays no attention to such remarks because his friends do not understand his tactics. A Warrior of the Light knows what he wants, and he has no need to waste time on explanations. I cannot express the magnitude with those two sets of lines right there. Okay? His friends say, look, he's lost all enthusiasm, but he pays no attention to such remarks because his friends do not understand his tactics. You are the only one who knows full well what's going on in your life. The good, the bad, the gorgeous, the ugly, the karma. You know you. You can't escape you. You know what's good for you if you would simply just be honest with yourself. Okay? Fight for what you want. Nobody understands what, what your goals are, what your dreams are, what your tactics to get those things are. Okay? You know what you want. It says right here. I believe that. You know what you want. Do not waste time on explanations. You don't owe anyone an explanation for what you're doing. Now, if it's in regards to maybe work, relationships... Sometimes there are moments where you might, you might be called to explain. Might. Someone who really knows you, boss or a spouse, they're going to know even without understanding. Okay. They will understand because they believe in you. They're going to understand that you know what you're doing and they're going to back you. That's where I'm going to leave that. All right, let's continue. Warrior of the Light, page five. A wise Chinese man has this to say about the strategies of the Warrior of the Light. Convince your enemy that he will gain very little by attacking you. This will diminish his enthusiasm. I'm going to pause. That right there is probably, even before I ever read this, I, I knew, like with bullies or with, you know, people who just come at you cross, right? You know, like, uh, they just, they, they, they have an opinion. They have a view. They have a perspective on your life. On your life. They have to, because that's from their perspective, based off of their experiences, their, their belief systems, the things that they've gone through in their life. That's all they have is their perspective. So when somebody's giving you advice or talking to you, they're coming from that perspective, from all those things that they've gathered along the way, including things about you. Or else they probably wouldn't even be in your circle and you wouldn't be talking to them and they wouldn't be giving you advice if you've asked for it. However, people who, who try to give advice and try to 
basically say like, oh, you shouldn't do that or I don't think that's a good choice. You should rethink that. I have done this. Given them the aura, the body language of what you're doing, you're going to get very little out of. Because I'm not going to play that game. I don't owe you an explanation. You're attacking me. I don't know why. You're trying to squash my flame. Hmm. I don't think so. Hmm. Nope. Let's continue. Do not be ashamed to make a temporary withdrawal from the field if you see that your enemy is stronger than you. It is not winning or losing a single battle that matters, but how the war ends. Think about that. Even if you are very strong, never be ashamed to feign weakness. This will make your enemy act imprudently and attack too soon. Okay? I really am thinking about Kendo in this. There are things that you can do and there are things you, you have to you have to every single opponent in Kendo you must give your your utmost. And it's multi-dynamic. We won't get into that, but you don't just open up you know your sword to just anybody because you'll get smashed, right? Don't oh take the center. Take the center. Control the center, okay? Very very few people will you be able to open up and win, okay? Be careful in kendo, specifically. L learn tactics and learn how to apply them to your life. Yeah. In war, the key to victory is the ability to surprise one's opponent. Let's keep going. I want to get to some of the nitty-gritty up in here. It's odd. What? It's a strange end quote. It's odd. Hmm. It's odd. The warrior of the light says to himself, I have met so many people who, at the first opportunity, try to show their very worst qualities. They hide their inner strength behind aggression and hide their fear of loneliness behind an air of independence. They do not believe in their own abilities, but are constantly trumpeting their virtues. That one caught me today. I read that today. <clears throat> I've read this book before, but, you know, I'm rereading. Let's continue. A warrior reads these messages in many of the men and women he meets. He is never taken in by appearances and makes a point of remaining silent when people try to impress him. He uses these occasions to correct his own faults, for other people make an excellent mirror. A warrior takes every opportunity to teach himself. Page 7. The warrior of the light sometimes fights with those he loves. The man who defends his friends is never overwhelmed by the storms of life. He is strong enough to come through difficulties and carry on. He does, however, often face challenges from those he is trying to teach the art of the sword. This is a very good quote. Be Let me just keep reading. His disciples provoke him into fighting with him. And the warrior demonstrates his abilities. Within just a few blows, he disarms his students and harmony returns to the place where they met. Why bother to do that when you are so much better than they are? Asked a traveler. Because in challenging me, what they really want is to talk to me. And this is my way of keeping the dialogue open, replies the warrior. I feel like I'll stop right there. Because that quote meant a lot to me at the end there. Um... I have students, I have students who have asked to cross swords with me. I have video of students crossing swords with me. And it's obvious 
that I've trained more than they have. I'm older than them. Um, I've read more books on philosophy and tactics. I've, I've just trained more. Literature, physical training, mental training, emotional training, uh, observatory training, uh, self-awareness, the works, okay? So it comes out here. Now, am I, am I shown by senseis and other people who have put in way more hours than me, maybe, you know, with, with the, the, the sword? Of course, they're going to outdo you. But you there's always going to be someone better than you. It's about putting in the hours. Putting in the hours. Especially if you're trying to train other people. If you're trying to train students on something, you had better have some form of working knowledge about what it is that you're providing. The students want to talk to you. They, they want to ask you questions. But they need something to believe in. So, what I think this is saying is by crossing swords and demonstrating that they don't have it all, that they don't understand everything yet, or how to defeat me, okay, that opens up the door for the communication to really unfold. Okay. Give them something to chew on, to think about when they leave that day. Man, why was he so fast? How did, why was he a bit able to do that to me? What was it that maybe I can practice and bring to the, the dojo next time? This is why I want to get back into kendo. This is why I need to get back into kendo on my own time simply just by putting the shinai in my hand or the boken 10 15 minutes a day while the coffee's brewing as chen sensei says while your coffee's brewing just pick up hold the shinai check your kamai okay check your kamai feel it maybe do some subari Depending on where you live and how loud you want to be, haya subiri, you know, check your footwork, right? Check basics. Check your uh, uh, sabaki, right? Ashi sabaki, you know, just do some quick forward, backward, left, right. Check yourself. Spend spend just a few moments aligning yourself in the morning. And, and and have that as a routine. This is something I want to do. This is something I can do. See, that's that's the thing. You need you like me. I'm just gonna say I'm gonna tell me. I need to to create a schedule where it's like I'm gonna do this regardless of what's going on in my life, whether it be work, whether it be um, well, it doesn't matter, right? Day off, right? That like in the morning or before bed or both, right? Pick up the shinai. Read, journal, write a poem. Give thanks. Pray if that's what you're into. Tell somebody you love them. There is not enough positivity in this world. And more importantly, there can never be enough. Very important to understand that. One, there's not enough. Two, there can never be enough. So, in terms of balance, right, uh, or of tipping the scale in in terms of uh, negativity and positivity, right, we need to add, even if the scale tips and hits bottom, right, it can't go anymore, doesn't matter, keep pouring it on, 
keep pouring it on. A scale, a scale in, in terms of its design has a stopping point, okay? However, that doesn't mean that it can't overflow like a cup, right? You, it'll just pour out and, and, and begin to affect the area around it if it's poured on more and more and more and more and more. Think of it as like sand or uh, ingots of some sort or wine, right? You, a cup overfloweth. That's what I'm saying. You can continue to pour on more and more positivity because it's just going to spread. It's going to spread. It's going to affect other people. They're more likely to kind of pay that positivity forward because of some, you don't have to be, you don't have to give anybody anything. You don't have to get them a coffee. You don't have to pay for the person's coffee behind you. You can, like those things are, are nice, right? I've seen it go three times. When I was working for Starbucks, I've seen the person pay for the person behind them, and then this person pay for the person behind them, and they've paid for the person behind them. I've also been part of a chain where I paid for the person behind me. And theirs was more expensive than mine, but I was like, you know what? This person paid for me? Like, what the heck? And it was because I let them go. Okay, so it was at a McDonald's too. So this is the one I'm talking about. So there was a McDonald's time where there's two two lanes, right? Guy is, is, is coming to approach, right? And we're both going. And I'm like, no, no, go, you go ahead. I've got more time, right? And I, I kind of holler, I've got more time. Go ahead, go, go, go. And so he goes in front of me and uh, pays for my meal. It wasn't a lot. It was maybe even like a drink or a sandwich or breakfast. I don't know what. But I, then I paid for the person behind me. Now, granted, I didn't care, right? I felt so empowered by somebody else's generosity that I was like, I'm gonna do the same thing for them. This was back when I was in Hutto, Texas. And... And even though it was more expensive than mine, I was still empowered to share that positivity for the people behind me. Spread positivity. Spread love. Work on yourself. It's very important to be the change in the life that you're living. If you want change, you have to embody change. You have to be seeking something from within yourself on how to be better, not just for yourself, not just for your loved ones, but for society. You are a dynamic, important piece to society. Whether or not you believe that, it's my belief. I believe that every single one of us have a connection to the whole. We are, we, are, we are all part of it. We all live in the same soup, hurtling through space at however many miles per second. Okay? We're on the same rock. All right? We share this thing called existence. So everything we do, you know, kind of like that butterfly effect, everything that happens ripples through time and space to other people and it resonates on a level that is just purely beyond us. So why not act from a place of positivity, of love, 